Yo, what is going on guys? Horcrux here and welcome to the channel. So let me ask you a very important question. Do you loathe the Magicka playstyle? You love the class, but you hate having to stack Max and Magicka and streak away every five seconds when you get pressured? Well, stick around because this build is for you. This is my bread and butter when it comes to open world PvP and I think you guys are going to absolutely love it. Let's get into it. Welcome back guys and before we hop into the bread and butter of today's video a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members without whom I would not be able to do this so thank you guys for supporting me and the channel. Yo welcome back guys hope you enjoyed watching the clips as much as I enjoyed making them those clips don't really do this build justice of how tanky you really are um it's pretty absurd you take this into BGs the good thing about this build is it works in every scenario. You can do no CP, you can do BGs, you can do open world serial. This is great. It's a great 1VX kit and also works great. It has a lot of group utility with mine. So uh, let's go ahead and hop into the uh, character sheet here. We are a high elf for this build. Um, everything uh, kind of fully buffed, uh, you know, maybe not really. So we got like 4,300 uh, spell damage, uh, 42k max magic on the back uh, front bar. Back bar, we got about 45k max magic. I know I said in the video, you, in the intro, that you don't need max magic. Well, this isn't really stacking max magic. This is mostly stacking your resistances, which is up to 32,000 and 28,000 respectively. Mag recovery is uh, 1800 this goes to well over 2k when you have continuous attack and then our spell critical when you proc your uh, your passives is around 34.4 uh, percent which is amazing for this build you do have a decent amount of spell penetration as well so race wise we are running a high elf we are rocking the mage mundus if you do need more sustain on this build if 2k is not enough or over 2k it's like 2200 if you need more sustain that's perfectly fine swapping the at uh, swapping the mage to the atro mundus we're going to be with Sugar Skulls because this is hands down because we pull from every single stat pool uh, pretty well. Health, Stamina, Magicka, it all plays into itself. Uh, this class kind of plays like a Dragonite, except you have Streak. So let's get into what sets we are running, guys. So this is probably, for the Magicka Sorcerer, my favorite, absolute favorite front bar set to run. This is Spinner's Garments. Uh, you get this from Malabal Tor. It gives you a lot of offensive penetration. We are Rocky Nernhone. I do think... A better trait would be sharpened for this, but I did not want to take the time to recreate this. I'm sorry, guys. The dam the difference is damage is very minuscule, to be honest. See, I've already transmuted this one to Nernhone. I'm not going to recraft it again for sharpen. So you, you are missing out on a little bit of damage. So you will have more. What I'm trying to say is 
when you run sharpened on this and we have a weapon damage enchantment on the front bar because sometimes it's hard to focus just one target in open world so having a weapon damage enchantment um, helps bolster your damage across the board for everything this buffs our minds as well which is my favorite part about the build so back bar set yes guys we're running iron blood this is horcrux videos if you know anything about my videos we are running iron blood on everything we run because it's the most broke set in the game well most bro most broke back bar set in the game i should add so um we're actually surprisingly running escapist poisons this is really nice because you do get um, a move ability to snares and uh, CC immunity for a little bit of time. Plus, it heals you a little bit. Um, this is just a great potion to, to have, or a poison, excuse me. Mythic item we're running is Sithis. On this build, you want to have everything well fitted. Well fitted is by far one of the best traits you can run on the magic of sorcery. You don't have to worry about Impim because the idea is to be tanky enough to live Donnie's spin to win, and then no one's really going to be able to hit you, to be honest. I'm um, checking our sample. Let, let, let me just explain how effective this is. So let's roll dodge one, two, three, four, five, six. You can roll dodge seven times without a potion in a row, guys. So you're pretty much a stamina class at this point uh, with the <laughs> amount of roll dodges you can do. It, it, it's pretty nutty and it gets you out of a lot of very unwanted situations. So. We're running 511 are the weights, uh, 5 lights, 1 medium, 1 heavy. Like I said, everything will be well fitted. Our other set we're running is One Piece Magna Incarnates. This gives you magic recovery as well as stamina recovery, which is much needed on the build because we do roll dodge quite a lot. We're running two piece training to round it off. This gives us health and max magicka. And then if you can, this is not necessarily a must, but I would suggest that you turn all of your iron blood jewelries um, into arcane uh, if you want to recraft this you just want to run iron blood on the body that's perfectly fine and have spinners jewelry that's perfectly fine too but your sustain is going to be a little bit worse because you're forced to run three lights three medium and one heavy at that point so if you do decide to go around um, that weight of sets then i would suggest running the atro instead of the mage to compensate for the uh, sustain uh, difference there but yeah you, you can do that too if you want a nice cheap way to run this build so now um, we're not running try shots on everything we have 31k health on on the, the back bar this is way more than my magic of dragonite this is actually 5k more than my magic of dragonite ironically so you're super super tanky no need to give yourself more health okay so this does it for the sets um you could potentially run sword and board but i wouldn't suggest it because you have to run crit surge and uh yeah just 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 go with it just copy and paste this so front bar running frags haunting curse daedric mind we'll come back to this one crushing shock streak and we're running running frank the charge atro you can run overload here um that is an alternative i do not like overload i actually loathe it so much i haven't even put it on my bar the very first time because quite frankly it's pretty oppressive when you're in 1v1s it's not flashy at all overloads are just you know it is what it is and you pair that with like Ellie weapon with overload i will say instead of running crushing shock if you do decide to run overload um, pair that with Ellie weapon from the sigic order skill line uh, that's a lot better synergy than this but uh again the reason i like running crushing shock because i'm on controller um this feels very fluent unlike Ellie weapon and i like having aoe control because this is a 1vx build now if you are running with another teammate or whatever have you uh, you can swap this for overload like i said and drop mines for like an execute or something but if you are 1vx and you really want to face tank some people in open world definitely run mines the beauty about mines is that it scales off direct damage um you would think it's scale off biting orders right but no it actually scales off the champion points that you need for your magic of sorcerer anyway so yeah just the just the more you know mine's hit extremely hard when this is fully buffed uh see if i can get uh fully buffed here uh mines are around uh 13 5 on tools when continuous attack is like 15 per mine and don't forget guys you have a passive in your skill line that actually heals you every time this hits someone as well so uh keep that in mind uh i think this is it yeah you heal for uh, three thousand so every time someone jumps in your mind the uh, you you hit them so this like three thousand three thousand three thousand three thousand you get healed for all that as well so 
Uh, it does cost a lot. A uh, good strategy. What I really like to do, I really like to curse streak mines. So what this does is when you streak mines your opponent, all right. Oh, if you streak mines correct, they have a choice. So if they they want to break for your road dodge, cool, but they have to eat your mines as well. And this is a really good offensive tool. Um, if you guys watched a video I put out like a month ago. There's an advanced tutorial about mine and some of the combos you can do with it, like uh, animation canceling the mines right there. You saw that, see there's a full animation, but you can do it like this as well to where it looks like they actually shoot out of your back. So, and this is really good. It catches people off guard because they don't see the, the cast animation for it, nor do they see the mines until it's too late. So mines is one of my favorite, if not favorite skills on the Magicka Sork. You can run the execute like I said, but I'm telling you guys, you are going to be super underwhelmed at the damage that it does not do. Like a lot of people are vampires right now, so the undeath passive, you know, really procs when people are low and it misses so often. It's such a wonky animation. It doesn't do enough damage for an execute. But yeah, it's really flashy when it goes off, but I just think you get more bang for your buck running mines. So that's my tangent on mines. So that, that's why I have it on my front bar, just because quite frankly, I can't have it on my back bar. Otherwise I would. One more thing to note, we are running the Alliance Spell Drop Potions before we continue to give us a crit on both bars, which is a really important. It gives us our major sorcery and also our major prophecy buff as well. Back to the back bar skills. Uh, dark conversion you don't necessarily have to run dark conversion if you don't want to you could potentially put another ward spot here i just feel that dark conversion is way too good of a utility ability to not have on your bar it also heals you and all that fun stuff uh hardened ward uh this does get pretty beefy um so the way iron blood works is of course it gives you the 30 percent flat damage mitigation but this also applies to your ward so whatever this tooltip is on hardened ward Increase this by 30%. So this one hardened ward and a rapid region is all you need to tank pretty much anyone. Unless you're getting Zerg down, of course. And then you have an immortality button, which we'll cover in a second. We have bound ages. So this is really, really slept on and good. Even though we're running Sithis, you may ask yourself, Horcrux, why would you have this for block mitigation? Well, sometimes you do have to block damage, like CCs from meteors and such. So when you see the ring on you, swap back to your back bar, pop this. That way you can at least block the CC and you're not going to waste all your stamina. Plus it increases your max and magic on your back bar, increasing the ward strength as well. And it gives you a minor resolve, increasing your spell and physical resist by 3000. Also on the back bar, Boundless Storm. This is not necessarily needed. I would say of all the skills on the back bar, I would drop Boundless Storm before I drop anything else. This is more or less a flex spot. If you want to run tripods, cool. You can toss on Critical Surge. Which is awesome because now you're really high crit stat, you're healing constantly from crushing shock and you know things of that nature. So these two play around with. I would highly suggest you guys run Bound Ages though. It is really good slept on ability in the Magicka Sorcery Kit. Last but not least is Life Giver. Guys, when I say you are invincible, when you have Iron Blood up and you pop your Restoration Ultimate, you will not die. You just cannot die for literally five seconds. I want you guys to try and kill someone who's popped this with iron blood. Okay, it is such a good ability and it is a really nice cheap OSHA button in case you need to get out of dodge really quick. So when you're in trouble, just pop life giver and you're good for five seconds to get your bearing straight. Now let's hop into the champion points. We're running deadly aim and master arms because all of our abilities essentially are single direct damage. We are running Ironclad as well. Now, Ironclad is cool, but the uh, the only other champion point you could potentially play around with, I'm running Arcane Supremacy right now. This is not needed. You could also slot a Duelist Rebuff instead of an Arcane Supremacy. That's entirely up to you. I think you'll gain more from Duelist Rebuff, but I was just playing around with Arcane Supremacy. Just kind of see what we can get our max magic pull up to. It's pretty decent. 45k without actually wanting to spec into it right so if you are going to run a ward now there is a variation of this build to where you don't have to run wards whatsoever but uh, that's a build for another day but if, because of your hardened ward you'll want to run Payne's refugee uh, this is an absolute must 
you'll want to run Shieldmaster, Bastion, and Arcane Alacrity. I like using these three because it's like a trifecta, right? Shieldmaster is going to help you with casting Harness. Bastion is going to increase the effectiveness of Harness. Or not, excuse me, Hardened. And then Arcane Alacrity, you don't necessarily have to run Shieldmaster. Um, if your sustain is okay, you can slot this elsewhere, right? So this is like your flex CP. Bastion, I think, is 100% essential because it increases, you know, the damage you do to shielded enemies and also increases the damage uh, mitigation of your hardened ward by 15%. So Bastion is definitely essential. And Arcane Alacrity, th this is amazing. So Arcane Alacrity, when you have a shield up, your roll dodges cost next to nothing. You guys saw at the beginning, I was able to roll dodge seven times without even having to pop a potion consecutively. So and this is my red CP setup. If you don't want Shield Master, I highly suggest Survival Instincts because this will give you even more mitigation on your roll dodge cost. You can probably get this up to 10 times when you have a status effect on you. Like, no lie, guys. Now, when it comes to Green Tree, it doesn't matter. We're not using expensive potions on this build. So just get your War Mount Gifted Rider, gifted rider Passives and Liquid Efficiency if you're a cheapo like me and you want your potions back <laughs> after using them. So, this has been the build, guys. If I come out with any updates, of course, I will let you all know. And now I do have a no ward magic of source or PVP build. It's not using pets either. So if you guys would be interested in seeing that, if I can get uh, 200 likes on this video, I will post the no ward mag sork, no pet mag sork build. Um, it is kind of niche. It is for higher skilled players. So if you're new to magic of sorcerer, that build would not be for you, but it is a lot of fun and you can play super aggressive and you just really catch people off guard because you never have a ward up. You can play super offensively like all the time. You have more healing on that class than you probably do a magic of Templar. It's pretty crazy. So uh, we'll get into that another day though. If you guys are interested in this, get some 200 likes. So please, guys, if you want to help support the channel, please like and sub. But if you want to go a step further, I have a Patreon. And also if you want to be a community member, uh, that's an option as well. If you want some PvP tips, builds, um, some one-on-one -on -one action in the uh, Discord, no homo. Um, yeah, there's there's perks that in my Patreon and Discord. So enough, enough selling myself. You guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.